Hi, this is Dan with Alesis, and today I'm going to show you the powerful new editing software included with your Strike or Strike Pro kit. With this software, you have a beautiful interface to do all your kit editing, but we've also unlocked the true potential of your Strike module by letting you create brand new, multi-layered instruments from scratch. You can find this download on the Strike Pro or Strike product pages on Alesis.com in the download section. Now to use the editor software, have your strike module connected to your computer via USB. The software actually interacts directly with your strike kits and instruments and saves right to your SD card. This is great because it means no more moving back and forth between your computer and the module. When you save a kit or an instrument in the software, it immediately refreshes and updates on the module. The software editor has two sides to it. The first is the kit editor. This is a one-to-one -one duplicate of all the kit editing features you have on the module, but in a nice desktop interface. And on the other side is the instrument editor. Here you can create brand new strike instruments from scratch, and in this video, I'd like to show you a couple of rather groundbreaking things you can do with it. So let's jump in. The first thing you want to do is power on your strike module and connect it to your computer via USB. Shortly after you do that, you'll see the external SD card inserted in your module appear on your desktop like any other external drive would. The drive will probably be named No Name, especially if this is the first time you're using the SD card. Personally, just to keep things organized, I'm going to name it External SD. If we open the drive, we'll see the four main folders that make up a Strike user library. Instruments, Kits, Samples, and Loops. We'll actually go into more detail later about how to import your own samples doing just this. Now let's open up the Strike software editor and have a look. Once we open it up, we'll see in the bottom left hand corner that it's scanning internal and user drives. So the software is scanning the kits, instruments, and samples folders both on your SD card plus on the internal content that came with your Strike module. This should take about 10 to 20 seconds to complete after which the status messages at the bottom left will disappear. Now, if this is your first time using the editor and your SD card does not have any instruments or samples on it at all, it's possible that the scanning internal in user drives message will actually stay on the screen. That's okay though. You'll find that you can still freely use the kit and instrument editors just as normal, and this message will go away once you create your own new instrument. You'll notice once everything is loaded, there will be drop-down arrows here in the instrument browser. If you don't have any of your own custom instruments yet, then the user dropdown will actually not appear here. Of course, the preset instruments should always be there. So the first thing we're looking at right now is the kit editor. This is where you're going to take the instruments, assign them to drums and cymbals on your kit, edit any parameters, add effects, and then save your kit. To browse and load a kit, we'll click here to open up the kit browser. You'll see your user kits, which are your custom kits from the SD card, and the preset kits, which again are the ones that come with Strike. If we click the arrow next to the preset kits, it will drop down and we'll see our kit folders. Let's open up the acoustic folder and select the first one, Rockin' Kit. We see instruments are loaded to each of the two layers available here. To change the trigger we're editing, simply click on the kit graphic here, and we'll see the instrument update. And now you have all the different parameters to edit just as you would on the module. To edit the kit effects, just go up to the right side here and click edit effects. You have the reverb and your multi effects. Just click the drop down to select an effect type, edit the parameters, so on and so forth. So let's go back to the main kit editor menu again. Now I mentioned the instrument browser before here at the top left. This is where you're going to browse and drag and drop the instruments you want to assign to your drums and cymbals. So there's a lot of instruments here to go through. You can click the arrow on the left side to drop down any folder, but to make this easier, we've also provided a search bar. Just click on the bar at the top here and let's type in something like rock. And we'll see the list of available folders and instruments narrows down immediately to those that have the word rock in them. Pretty straightforward. So, how do we load a new sound? Simple. Just click on the trigger you want to add the instrument to, and then just click and drag the instrument of your choice down to either layer A or layer B. And of course, if I want to put another sound onto layer B, 
I would just drag another snare instrument or whatever down to layer B. Then you can edit any of the parameters as you see fit. And that's it. Once you're done, to save your new kit, simply go to File, Save As, and it will bring you right to the SD card in your strike module. So just type in the name of the new kit. You can also take this opportunity to create a new folder. And as you can see, I've already created a custom folder here. And when you're done, click Save. You'll actually see on the strike module, it will repopulate the kits automatically. And after a second or two, it's ready to play. Pretty cool. So now let's take a look at the instrument editor. I'm gonna go up to Mode and click on Instrument Editor. And here it is. Like the kit editor, we still have an instrument browser on the left here. So let's open up a preset instrument, and we'll take a look at the chinas and splashes here. The difference now, though, is if we double click on an instrument, now we get to see behind the scenes, all of the individual samples that make up the instrument. And what you're looking at right now is the bottom level of what makes the strike sound. Now at the top, we have what are called the layer defaults. These are common parameters that you find in the kit editor or on the module. Whatever you set here will determine what parameters load by default when you add an instrument into a kit. And moving along, let's discuss the way the samples are structured in an instrument. The velocity range or VEL range column here tells Strike that you want to play a certain sample only when you hit a drum or a cymbal at a certain velocity. The word velocity is basically the electronic drum equivalent of how hard you hit the drum or cymbal. Velocity values can range from 1 to 127, the lower numbers being softer hits and the higher numbers being harder hits. Now there's a whole lot you can do with just this concept in the editor, but we'll keep this to a brief overview for now. In simple terms, this software opens up to you all of the tools that were used to make the original strike instruments. There are no limitations. Now recording and editing your own samples can be time consuming, but to make this process much easier, we've added an amazing feature called AutoMap. The AutoMap feature allows you to take a large group of samples, decide how many velocity layers you'd like, detect the volume of each sample, and then automatically turn these samples into a multi-layered instrument for you. Let me show you this feature by doing something many drummers have been curious about for years, importing samples from your own favorite software drum sample libraries. The first thing we need to do is get our samples onto our SD card. Let's minimize the editor just for a moment so you can see what's going on. Here I have my folder of samples. In this case, we have quite a few samples that all make up a recording of just one snare drum. I'm going to open up my SD card, go to the Samples folder, and in this case, let's go into this Big Kit folder. And now I'll just drag my sample folder right into here to copy it. Again, I'm doing this video on a Mac, but the same basic file folder navigation applies to a Windows computer as well. Now, let's close this folder down, expand the instrument editor again. Now, the editor software knows I just copied new samples onto my SD card, and has already rescanned and refreshed automatically. So let's create a new instrument. We'll go to File, New, and then the editor will ask us what instrument type we want to create. There are three types of instruments in Strike, a single, which is what you'll use 99% of the time, and the other two are hi-hat cymbal and hi-hat pedal. Now these are a bit more complex for those who want to make their own multi-position hi-hats. That's something we'll cover in more detail in some other videos. For now, let's just choose Single and click OK. Now we've got a blank instrument. Let's go find those samples we just copied over. To do that, we go to this right column, the Sample Browser. This Sample Browser shows what you have in the Samples folder on your SD card, and it also gives you access to the over 14,000 samples that came with Strike, the preset samples. Now, since we're talking about our own custom samples, we're going to drop down the user sample section. And let's open that big kit folder and find our MFSSS snare center folder we just copied over. And when we drop that down, you'll see all of our many samples for this snare. So we'll click to highlight our first sample, and then I'll scroll down. And now I'm going to hold the shift key on my keyboard and click the last sample. So that will select all of the samples in that folder. And now I'm just going to click on Auto Map. 
It asks us how many velocity ranges we'd prefer for this instrument. The AutoMap feature takes all of your samples, analyzes what the perceived loudness of each one is, and then it distributes them according to what will sound and feel the most realistic. So I'll just keep this at 16 for now and click OK. The status bar will show us the progress, and shortly thereafter, we now have a complete strike instrument. All of the velocity ranges have been automatically determined, the most appropriate samples have been put in the right place. If you see more than one sample in a velocity range, that means they have a similar volume level. This is actually a good thing, because this will help to avoid hearing the same sample twice in a row, which some people refer to as machine gunning. The last step here would be to save our new instrument. Like in the kit editor, just go to File, Save As. The only difference now is we've been directed to the Instruments folder instead of the Kits folder. So I'll go to my Superior Kit folder here, and I'm going to name this one MFSSS Snare Center, and click Save. So now we've saved that new instrument from the editor. It's been put right onto our SD card in the module. So now let's assign it to our snare drum and see what it sounds like. We're going to press the voice menu. We're going to go to instrument. And I'm going to go to my user bank and go down to the superior kit here. And we have our center snare there. And let's see what it sounds like. So we've just taken a series of samples in our editor, used the auto map feature to immediately turn it right into an instrument, and we have a beautiful realistic sounding instrument on the drum set immediately. So to give you a better idea of what's possible, here's what it sounds like with a full drum kit from a software sample library. Let's have a listen. Okay, everyone, until next time, I'm Dan Recchio with Elisis. Thanks for watching.